The OCR Practical Activity Tracking Spreadsheet, commonly referred to as the PAG Tracker, is provided as a free resource by OCR. It's not mandatory to use this to maintain the documentary requirements of the practical endorsement, but it is hoped will be seen to be so useful that it becomes almost universally used. It must be remembered that this is an Excel spreadsheet rather than proprietary software, and so the functions available are at times restricted by what is possible within Excel. That said, it allows the identification of skills, apparatus and techniques covered by individual selection of practical activities, the identification of activities to meet a specific skill, the addition of student names, selection by class, automatically cross-referencing student achievements against mapped activities, and class summary sheet including identification of any skills and techniques not covered. The most significant improvements from the earlier demo version are the ability to input different dates against each class and the ability to add comments against individual cells to make notes for later reference. It also comes in 30, 100 and 400 student versions, depending on the centre size. Open the spreadsheet to the introduction page. Click on Enter your student names and class details button under the class data heading. This opens a screen showing a table to enter your class data. You can do this name by name or by copying and pasting from an existing document. When you populate the first name and surnames column, the student name column is automatically completed. Each student takes the identity of a learner within the spreadsheet L1, L2 etc. in turn as you complete the table and that allocation is retained throughout the use of that tracker spreadsheet. If a student joins your class late, you have to add them to the bottom of the list. If a student leaves your class, you can remove their name, but will not be able to reassign their learner identity, so that row will just remain blank. It is also possible to enter the class or group descriptor for each student. If, you're, if you are using the same spreadsheet for a number of different classes, this can be a useful identifier and allows filtering of cohorts by class to enter the date and activity is carried out by that class. It also allows the reallocation of students to different teaching groups when they move from lower to upper sixth. A range of practical activities have been provided and mapped by OCR for each subject at A-level. These are available for each practical activity, or PAG, from Interchange the OCR Teacher Access site where assessment materials may be accessed for download. To check that the combination of activities you have chosen covers all of the skills, apparatus, techniques and the CPAC, from the Introduction screen click on Select OCR Activity Combinations to ensure coverage of specification content. You then need to tick the box next to each activity within each PAG that you have chosen. If you have decided to do more than one activity in a particular PAG, then you can tick more than one box. The minimum requirement is that students demonstrate all the skills, apparatus and techniques by carrying out a minimum of 12 practical activities over the two-year course. So to be compliant, you should have selected at least 12 activities. Then, when you scroll down the screen, you will see that the relevant skills, apparatus and techniques, and then the CPAC that are covered by the selected activities have been highlighted. This allows you to ensure that the activities selected meet the minimum requirements of the practical endorsement. At any point, there is a button to return to the introduction. In biology, selecting one activity from each group of practical activities will give coverage of all the required skills, apparatus and techniques. Whilst for physics and chemistry, selecting the first activity in each group, PAGS 1.1, 2.1, 3.1 1, etc., gives coverage with many other possible combinations. Particularly in physics, if both 5.1 and 5.3 are selected. It is also possible to check mapping of activities in a different way. If you would like to see which activities in each PAG cover particular skills, apparatus, techniques in the CPAC, 
Click on Select Specification Content to identify OCR activity combinations from the introduction screen. You then need to consider which skills, apparatus, techniques and criteria that you would like to find activities to cover and tick the relevant boxes beside the statements. For example, if you would like to see which activities cover E, production of scientific drawings from observations with annotations, then if you tick the box next to that statement, then scroll up, the practicals that are mapped against this statement are highlighted. There are 13 opportunities for students to cover this technique. There is no obligation to use the activities provided by OCR. And so if you have a practical that you use in your centre that you wish to use that covers a different mix of skills, apparatus and techniques, the tracker has a function to allow you to map this activity so that it automatically populates the results for each student in just the same way that the pre-programmed OCR activities do. From the introduction screen, click on Map your centre activities. It is then possible to add the title of your centre activity for each PAG as activity 4 for each one. Once you have done this, you can then map the activity by ticking the boxes of the relevant skills, apparatus, techniques and the CPAC for that activity. This activity will then appear by title in the spreadsheet and will be used in the same way as the OCR mapped activities. In this way, it is possible to use 12 centre chosen and mapped activities to cover all of these skills, apparatus, techniques and the CPAC for the practical endorsement or to include a mix of OCR activities and centre devised activities. When using the tracker on a week by week basis, the first screen to look at is enter activity dates and student attendance from the introduction screen. This is also available from the class attendance summary tab at the bottom of the spreadsheet. You might, for example, have completed activity one using a light microscope to study mitosis on the 6th of September 2015. So this date should be entered for each student. Henry Peel is absent on this day, so absent is recorded for him. Use the filter function to select your class if the spreadsheet is being used for more than one class. Enter the date in the top cell. Move the cursor to the bottom right corner until a cross appears. Then drag this down until the highlighted rectangle covers the date entry space for all students. Enter A or absent for Henry Peel. The default for each student when the date is entered for the activity is the assumption that they have achieved all of the relevant skills, techniques and competencies mapped against that activity. So, if you click on the Class Achievement tab at the bottom of the spreadsheet, each of the relevant skills, techniques and competencies is populated with a 1 for each student. If any of the students did not achieve a particular skill, technique or competence, it is possible to click on View to the left of the name of that student in the Class Attendance Summary screen and change any of the boxes. For example, Daniel Tuck did not achieve E, production of scientific drawings from observations with annotations, or 4, makes and records observations. So these cells have been changed to not achieved using the drop down menu, which appears when you move the cursor to the right of that cell. When you go back to the class achievement screen, you can see that these are now zero, along with all of the relevant cells for Henry Peel, who was absent. It is hoped that by having the default set as achieved, this will lessen the administrative burden for teachers. <laughs>